That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you give to us for the uh, for the peace that you give us in your Son. For being with us when we are when we when we cheat each other and and forgiving us and and not abandoning us when we so much deserve it. Be with us as we study your word and and build up our faith. Help us to recognize the blessings that you give to us and your hand in our lives and lead us to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Genesis 29, starting with verse 14. It's a great soap opera. This is like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you sort of expect this. This is this is the next closest thing to, well, it was really her evil twin, you know. <laughs> the truth is stranger than fiction. So I want to read. Then Laban said to him, "You are my own flesh and blood." After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Laban said to him, Just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. My time is completed, and I want to lie with her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and gave her to Jacob, and Jacob lay with her. And Laban gave his servant girl Zilpah to his daughter as her maidservant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, It is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week. Then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban gave his servant girl Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her maidservant. Jacob lay with Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And he worked for Laban another seven years. All right. So sometimes people get this mixed up. That he didn't. All right. So he worked for seven years. Um received Leah as his husband and then a week later married Rachel but then he was sort of bound by contract to work another seven years it wasn't that he worked seven years married Leah worked another seven years and then married Rachel all right oh that's what it sounded like yeah and so it's 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 after a week <coughs> um, because the there's sort of this um this this bridal week uh where you like the honeymoon yeah. So he was kind of busy for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. He, a of weeks, but, you know, but yeah, it was... Um, Days of our lives. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Duh. How does that really matter if the poor oldest girl was only with him for a week? Well, no, he was still, they were still married. Yeah. He just had he two had wives. He had both of his wives then. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought he just... You know. No, no, no. <laughs> Got rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so, has anybody ever played a mean trick on you? Oh, my sister did it all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she cut my hair, and my hair was, like, down to my elbows. She cut it right in the middle of my head while I was sleeping. <laughs> so I had, like, it was probably about this much that stuck straight up in the air about a half an inch. 
That was kind of cool. Wasn't that though? <laughs> Not. Yeah, that had a pretty much rule. You're so Did you wear a hat for a while? For a while? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did your parents do anything at that point? I mean, did they no, just. I think my sister was grounded like her entire life. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least as a girl, it when it didn't gets. work. <laughs> if it gets a little longer, you can, like, put a clip in it or something. Yeah. Like, you know, down. like, pick up this part and clip it there until yeah. it at least grew enough that it would lay flat. <laughs> of course, with a boy, you just, like, you know, buzz. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. done. Done. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Or did you ever play a dirty trick on somebody else? No, it was just April 1st. We could have. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if it's so much a trick, but I'm pretty sure I probably got got disciplined in some kind of way. But I can remember that my sister used to have a collection. Well, I had one younger sister. And she had, you know, of course, young little girl. She's probably five or six. She had baby dolls. So I promptly got one of them. And speaking of hair, I cut all its hair off that was about that tall and handed it to her. And I says, look, you can go to Kmart where your doll hair buys you more. Because that was their slogan. I was in pretty big trouble. <laughs> not a good move. Not, not, not. Nobody found that humorous except me. And <laughs> needless to say, yeah, it was ugly. <laughs> it was ugly. We laugh about it now, of course. Yeah. And back then, no, I was not the last guy laughing, that's for sure. Well, you talk about April 1st. That's, I, I, I trick the kids on a couple things, just li you know, little things. Um, the thing is, when you say April Fools, they don't necessarily realize that the whole thing you just made it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I told Anna, I said, before you leave school, um, you need to uh, make sure that that you go to the bathroom before you get on the bus, because the city is turning off the water for the whole block mm -hmm. and if you have to go to the bathroom you're going to have to go outside <laughs> <laughs> and she's like really? <laughs> I, said, I said yeah I don't know, the city you know they they, they sent us a letter and um, and it's a, they're, they're, it's some sort of April Fool's thing <laughs> at which point she should have gone oh mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and then, but she was like Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so she she got off the bus. <laughs> said, well, she goes to the bathroom right before you left school. Yep. And then and then she asked some other question about like when's it gonna be turned back on or something like that. Oh, you didn't get the whole April Fool's thing, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> No, no. And I mean, frankly, it's probably a good idea anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Mm. Uh, all right. So, uh, looking at verse 21, how did Laban manipulate Jacob's words? Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed and I want to lie with her. Hmm. Notice that he wasn't specific. Oh, so he should have said. Oh, Rachel. he said, "Yeah, give me my wife." Yeah, he should have yeah. said, "Give me Rachel." So maybe go, "I gave you your wife. <laughs> 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 you got away." Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess it's his fault then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it was April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, this leads to probably the biggest question all right, about this story is, how could Jacob have not realized with whom he was sleeping? Exactly. All right? Well, you know what, though, thinking about this because I thought lot. about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I was sitting there thinking about it because I looked at this before I came tonight, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, back then... I mean, these men didn't lie with their wives until they were married to them. So, I mean, you could see them from the outward appearance, but I mean, unless they were vastly, vastly different, the only thing they were saying was that Leah had delicate eyes, you know, and Rachel was also beautiful to look at, but, you know, I'm sure that they were, it says they had a week-long feast, I'm sure he was probably feeling pretty good too, and you're kind of half out of it, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's nighttime or something, and, you know, there's... I don't know, though. You know, I mean, unless she didn't speak a word or something, maybe, you know, Laban told her to don't say anything, just, you know, 
Your I'm wedding night. I'm not buying it. <laughs> All right. You should be able to recognize the woman you love. <laughs> you would think. Right. Now, if you know this whole thing about weak eyes. All right, the word weak, your delicate or whatever. Nobody really knows what that word means. It's not a commonly used Hebrew word, and so um, there's not a lot of places to sort of see where is this word used otherwise to kind of figure out what it means. All right. So it could have been, you know, weak as in like she was cross-eyed or had a lazy eye or something like that. It could have been weak in the sense of just like um, not strong or not, uh, not you know, not pretty or, or uh, sort of plain. Uh, yeah, or, or, or whatever. But, but whatever it was, Rachel, she was... Yeah. Gorgeous, you know, and and or he was just maybe it could have just meant that Leah's eyes were not as beautiful as Rachel's eyes, you know, or who you knows. Um, but given that a lot of times these women would wear veils, it could be that all he really knew about what she looked like was her eyes and her height, or you know. But you're right. Or, Wouldn't you kind of picture two and two together? And the more I'm thinking about that too. I mean, once you're actually lying with somebody after you've looked at them and kind of just figured how they might be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but but it's dark, right? And <laughs> you're kind of drunk. <laughs> kinda. Yeah, he was probably whipped after a week. But still not. Right. And uh, being sisters, they may have had similar you know voices and and uh you know things like that they may have been very much alike denise ain't buying it no i'm not um <laughs> because i think there's more of a difference well besides that i'm sorry I just, yeah you gotta know um because it says rachel was lovely in form and beautiful so i'm thinking she had a very nice figure mm -hmm. as well as a beautiful face well you think about the clothes that they wore. They wore pretty loose-fitting clothes, so... And how do they come to that conclusion, too, you know? It, it, Unless she had wider hips or something, or something that stuck out. <laughs> well, I didn't mean it like that, but you know what I meant. I mean, just something that obviously he you could notice no matter what kind of clothes she was wearing. Well, I guess, well, yeah, that's just part stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's quit. <laughs> let's quit. It's a guy thing. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you know, I, they may have, um, you know, the the ladies may have had veils on, you know, until they were in a dark room together, and and if uh, if sort of given that Laban was planning on pulling the switch, he may have taken some of. Uh, Something that was that uniquely belonged to Rachel or something like that, and 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 put it on Leah to maybe a type of perfume or, or something. That old goat skin. Gold skin. <laughs> yeah, Leah had nice hair. Yeah. <laughs> My hairy arms. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> 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 uh, maybe Jacob, maybe Jacob's nice for the lady. <laughs> <laughs> These people are easy to fool. Oh boy, <laughs> they're gullible. Uh huh. <laughs> mm. Although I imagine too, they probably did have different kind of <coughs> herbs. I imagine though, you're right. A week long, it's even said under the thing. You know, a week long of just partying and having a great time. I can't imagine he had his complete faculties, but even so, <coughs> he must have been able to do something. It kind of struck me that you know, this is this is such a, a romantic you know. <laughs> Give give me <laughs> my time is completed. I want to lie with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> wow, that's that's so deep and and you know. <laughs> I'm going back to the guy thing. I'm sticking with that. Yeah. <laughs> Young guy working well, seven years. Well, you, know, you can see, he goes to this guy and says, "Look, buddy, yeah, seven years." <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! And he throws it in their, their face all the time. Seven <laughs> years I do for you. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah that imagine what he said to Rachel. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> all right. Um. 
So how is Jacob's being deceived in 29.25 ironic? I first thought of when he deceived his brother Esau, his dad, out of his birthright. Right, now. yeah. Denise already mentioned it. The sort of pulled the switcheroo. It's specifically about the firstborn versus the younger. So don't you think he'd be a little bit more aware? <laughs> Is this really the woman I love? <laughs> Guess not. You know, I have found that the oftentimes the people that that are the con men are easily con <laughs> because they think they're smarter than everybody else and so they don't really they don't see it coming um and so they they figure that they don't have to watch too closely because nobody else could possibly be as clever as they are <clears throat> I wonder what Leah's thoughts were on all of this, though. You know, because you really wonder. I mean, maybe she, at that point, I know that marriages sometimes were arranged, I guess, but maybe she really wasn't that crazy about Jacob to begin with anyway. You know? Well, especially knowing how he felt about her sisters. So she's like, well, or maybe, you know, I mean, sisters, you know, I don't know. My mom used to tell me all the time, too, that, you know, her family, when she met my dad, her sister didn't think my dad was worth marrying, you know, but... You know, she's been married to him for 50-some years, so, I mean, it must have worked out somehow. You know, so people can be initially wrong, you know, but it just makes you wonder. I wonder what her feelings were. Maybe she really thought Jacob was this handsome guy, and, you know, boy, she was thrilled to, you know, be able to be her, her, his wife and find out that he really doesn't care about her that much, you know. He really was wanting her sister. That'd be kind of tough to deal with. Huh? On the other hand, maybe she looked in the mirror and went, well, I'm never going to get a guy otherwise, so I'll take what I can get, you know. If there was something about her that was really, you know, yeah, and, made and you hate to think that way, but she had really low self-esteem and, and stuff, and, and she just didn't think much of herself, and she was just happy to get somebody. And so, you know, I mean, she went along with her dad on this. Yeah, obviously, right. I mean, she had to play along. Right. And, and so, you know, why did she go along with it? Was it because she figured she didn't have a choice, she'd never get anybody else? Um, was it because she um, she was just that obedient to her father? Um, boy, that's obedient. Well, that's, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. if she wasn't if she wasn't on board with this whole plan, that's an incredible obedience. Do you think Laban's lying then when he says it's their custom that the you know you, that the first girl should always be married before the second, or is that kind of just a, a line? Uh, I really don't know what their custom really was. You know, you know what I mean? Maybe he was actually. I, I don't know. Um. That I I think that's a pretty common custom. Um, you ever seen Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew? It's been many many years. Okay, but. that's actually that's the basis of that movie. Or movie, yeah. Well, they had that too. Sorry, <laughs> they, they, they had a movie on yeah, that. Was, no, but they're really. I was, well. I was in, I was in that play, so that's embarrassing. Um, in fact, I had the lead role, but, uh, but yeah, he Petruchio marries um, Catherine, um, basically so that his name is Lucentio can marry Bianca, and and he's like, yeah, challenge accepted, you know, and and that's how he goes into it. But it was. The, the other guy couldn't marry the younger sister until the older one was until married. Until the older one was married, so he's sort of like, eh, I can handle it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he got his hands full. <laughs> yeah, I made for a good. It's it's. I like Shakespeare and and particularly his comedies and 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 that was a good one. We had a lot of fun doing it. So. All right. Um. All right, so what would you have been willing to do to marry your spouse? 14 years as an agricultural slave? I don't like farms. I don't like <laughs> the manure. I don't like the smell of cow, cow crap and all that. You don't want to sling I have no. allergies. No, I don't think so. No, I don't oh, think man, so. cleaning out the stalls ain't your thing? So. Oh. It's hard to go by a pig farm in Penfield Township on a summer day and with your windows down because you're like, oh, no. Man, that is about the worst. Yeah. 
So we heard. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I related to that when you said that today in the sermon. I'm like, I have gone, I haven't worked that, but you can smell them a mile away, no doubt about it. You get a good, nice, hot day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The humidity is real high. And... <sighs> yeah. It's funny because cows, I don't mind. Maybe because I grew up in Wisconsin, I'm used to it. And, uh, and but. But pigs are, that's a whole nother story. Mm, it really is. So, it's, I mean, it's nasty. This would have been, you know, these were goats. If, if you look at the fact that the names Leah and Rachel, Leah means cow, and Rachel means uh, a ewe, a, a female lamb, um, you know, he was probably herding cows and sheep. <laughs> like, well, what do you want to name your kid? Well, uh, Oh, cow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was the meaning of their name. No yeah, kidding. Yeah. That is kind of unusual. Wow. So, <laughs> cow. <Maybe. laughs> I, I think it's like it's like wild ox or something like that, but it's it's basically cow. Yeah. <laughs> well, then see, maybe Leah was kind of hefty. <laughs> maybe, you know. I don't uh, know. Boy, yeah. Well, the, I can't, the, I can't wait, sign no, it no, off. You're hurting my it. theory, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had to be roughly the same build. Okay. Otherwise, you would have noticed. Yeah. You know, unless, it, unless it was like, uh, did you see the movie Shallow Hell? See that one? It was a uh, this this guy who only looks at women for their appearance, and um, and and it's with that chubby comedian, Jack Black. Jack Black, yeah. <coughs> did you see it? And no. I saw parts of it. Mm. He gets sort of zapped so that he doesn't see a person's outward appearance. He only sees their inner, um, their sort of inner beauty kind of thing. And um, and he ends up dating this woman who's like 400 pounds. And um, oh yeah, I saw that movie. Yeah. And but but he because she's this. She, he looks. She looks like a like a like a box. Box. Yeah. Right, right. Because because <laughs> inside she's just a, an amazing, wonderful woman. She volunteers and she helps kids and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and you know, and, and she meets, or he meets all her friends who all are, um, you know, are these great looking people. And he's really jealous of them. Well, they're really not good looking, but they're all these same kind of really generous people and, and stuff. And um, so, but there's. Um, you know, she'll she'll sit down and the chair will bend, you know. And he's like, "What the heck?" You know. <laughs> See, he couldn't tell. So I'm not really going with Michelle <laughs> Hell theory on this one. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can't do it. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, it was a cute movie, though. Not not for kids. It was definitely not a kids movie, but, um, but it was it was cute. We enjoyed it. Um, all right. Uh, so, okay, the next question. Would you be willing to work that hard to keep your spouse once you're married? Physical labor? <laughs> 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 that I mean, to stay married is work. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's physical labor. Well, okay. I mean, you know, and that's an important point. When we look at this agricultural labor that, you know, that you had to do, that was pretty much life mm-hmm. back then. Yeah. You know, that was most people. That's what you did. Mm-hmm. Um, so they yeah, they didn't live like we do. Right. 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 Yeah. We're we're yeah. kind of pampering, and you know. So if you would nowadays, it'd probably be like working in an office or something like that. You know. Um, so yeah. So we're 14 years in in, in at the college. <laughs> <laughs> To without, keep your spouse. without air conditioning. Without <laughs> air conditioning yeah. in the summer. Yeah. And the windows don't open. <laughs> By the pig farm. I, yeah. me, pig I don't farm. have a window. <laughs> <laughs> <Your cubicle. laughs> you know, because here's the thing, like, like, oh wow, yeah, she's a really great girl, but I gotta work that long. You know what? There's other fish in the sea. You know, <laughs> like. Once you're married, then then it's it's different because then you, I mean, I don't know, at least to me, not saying that I wouldn't have, you know, worked seven or fourteen years or whatever for Teresa. I don't know, maybe I would. I I can't really say at this point, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, would I now? Yeah, I, you know, anything. Right. And it's it's totally different. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, back then I I made all sorts of grandiose statements. Oh, I would. I would scrub toilets for the rest of my life to be with you and all this kind of stuff. And my parents are like, 
No, you wouldn't. But you won't. No, so but a female <laughs> will appreciate that remark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, especially though if you hold them to it. <laughs> Remember that toilet scrubbing thing you said? Yeah, you got the job. <laughs> well, right. Try to there, marry. Done it. Done it. Well, I was specifically referring to, you know, like as a career. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's there on the house. Mm. No, I, oh, I, okay. I do those things. But, uh, I had to be trained with that, I'll mind you, because there's a right and wrong way to clean toilets, by the way. I found that out. So. Mm. Isn't that a terrible thing? And I know every female I know does that, you know, and um, you just, I'm thinking, that's just ridiculous, you know? Everybody cleans their own way, and if they're doing it, it's clean enough. <laughs> that's like loading the dishwasher. Is there really a wrong way to do that? Well, I, I've, I've, I'm convinced that loading the dishwasher is a one-person job, and you let whoever's loading it, you let them load it. You don't watch them do it because it will irk you, because everybody's got their own way of doing it. Just that. Yeah. You don't know if you know how to squeeze as much in there as possible. <laughs> well, I, I, in, in my house, we won't use the dishwasher until Nick gets better because <laughs> the the pipe disengaged from the sink while oh. Greg was in Columbus. <laughs> I'm just standing in a puddle of water. I just said, well, the good news is I didn't do use the dishwasher because in my living room it was. <laughs> 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 So why did Jacob keep Lee as a wife? He didn't agree to marry her. Why did he? Were they bound at that point? Maybe he felt sorry for her. Right, could be. He was probably compelled, huh? Because I'm of the, the father? They slept together. Oh, yeah. well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Once, you're, it? once you're... Yeah, once you slept together, that's it. And, you know, th that's something that nowadays... See, okay, and, and that, that sort of idea... Has has sometimes been used, like, well, you slept with her now you got to marry her, or you got her pregnant now you got to marry her, all right? Plus, marriages never work. Okay, once in a while maybe they do. Okay, there's exceptions to every rule. Okay, but statistically, those marriages have a horrible chance, even if they were planning on getting married, and then. Um, and then, oh, she gets pregnant, and so they move up the date or something like that. Um, what happens is they feel like they were forced into it. And it just, it really, it's, it's, it's a huge strike against them as a couple. It puts a lot of pressure on them, yeah. yeah. And, and it just, it really breaks up a lot of marriages. Um, and, and so, I mean, and I know people that, that, got pregnant and got married, you know, um, and if done just great. Um, but there's there's just so many times where that doesn't work out. So, the, I mean, the sort of common wisdom that, oh, well, you got her pregnant, now you have to marry her, so the whole shotgun wedding kind of thing, it's not always a good idea. Yeah, but you get so, so many more where they're just living together. <coughs> I mean, that's, that's getting to be such a big trend. Mm -hmm. M marriage isn't taking place I'm sure the percentage is extremely down sure you know in comparison to years ago yeah yeah nowadays, nowadays it's it's more it's more the norm than, mm -hmm. than the exception. Even single parents I mean you know they're just especially I think in the in the black and the ethnic communities where they just you know girls are still girls and barely out of high school and already have one or two kids and they're still not married, and you know, it's just they all have different last names. I mean, just there's and it's an, socially acceptable. There, there was an interesting story um, in uh, in New York a couple of weeks ago about a pro-life group that put up a billboard in a predominantly black community, and the billboard said <coughs> the most <coughs> dangerous place for an African American is in the mo in his mother's womb because the the abortion rate nation well the abortion rate in New York 
among blacks is like 65 percent. Wow. More than half. Yeah. Wow. 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 And wow. and then and nationwide, it's like I forget what it is, but it's 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 well above the sort of national average. And and with this billboard, the you know what this the reason this organization put it up there is they said, look, we got to help these people so that they don't feel like this is their only um, option. And um, and you also have to understand that when uh, when Planned Parenthood first started putting up their clinics, they did it in predominantly black communities because the founder of Planned Parenthood was racist. And he thought it'd be a good way to get rid of a lot of the blacks. Is well, let's get rid of them before they're born. Wow. So it wasn't a racist thing at all. What they were doing, um, they were trying to say, let's help them, because they're you know they're hurting themselves by by doing this, and and you know this is just statistically we need to help them out, and and telling them that this is your only option, is is not helping them. Right, and um, and so it, it turned into the big thing. They were accused of being racist and everything, and they absolutely weren't. Um, and uh, and and so it was it was really kind of a sad thing. And um, so now the the latest thing, um, completely unrelated, but uh, it was kind of interesting. Just a couple of weeks later, Arizona has um, has just passed a law. The government signed it into law that um, you cannot have an abortion if your reason for doing it is the gender or the race of the baby. So if you went for an abortion, they say, well, why do you want to have an abortion? If you say, because I wanted a girl and this is a boy, then they have to say, no, I'm sorry. Or um, because I, I really wanted a child of this color and I know that the father is this other color and so I don't want this baby and um, then no sorry can't do it um, now you know that when they go into Planned Parenthood they're gonna say all right now I need you to understand that I need to ask you why you're doing this but if you tell me that it's because of this or that then I can't do it now right. why you know did people really give that as a reason I imagine there must so. be some well, I mean they see, need so much more help than mm -hmm. well okay I you know I can see it in a situation where Okay, well, I'm married to a guy that's this color, and I know that the father of this child is a different color. Oh. <laughs> See, my, I don't even go that way in thinking. I don't know what's wrong with me. Right. And, <laughs> and there, are people that, there are people that say, you know, I wanted a boy or I wanted a girl. All right. They're like at China, weren't they? I mean, no, in China, or, big time. China. I mean, huge The problems. government forces them to have abortions. It's right. not that they want to. Right. But but the thing is, they all want boys, and so, um, so yeah. Now they've they've got it's not now that that's been going on for a while. They've got all these men and not enough women, and it's a huge problem, and <laughs> it makes me nervous because they go, well, gee, how do you get rid of an excess glut of men? Hmm. A war? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, the what what I see is I was thinking about this. And I, now wait a minute. If you're saying that you cannot discriminate against these against these unborn children based on race or gender, what you're saying is that. That you be why is that you know why why would that hold up constitutionally because according to the constitution any person you cannot discriminate against a person because of their race or color right now you're defining that child as a person okay and if you can't discriminate against them based on race or color why can you discriminate against them based on age because once you define that child as a person then they have legal rights. And um, and so that's the whole thing. Like, they're you know they're alive. You can't say life doesn't begin at conception because it, it absolutely does by every definite scientific definition of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't say they're not human because their chromosomes prove that. Okay, and so it's really a question of are they a person? Or do they have legal standing as as a person? You know, and so it's really a legal question. It's it's not. That's all, that's all it so is. I'm still going to come up with the argument that 
the child cannot live outside on its own exception. But is McCain still the governor of Arizona? No. No, he he wasn't governor. He was a uh, senator. Oh. That's right. So, no, I, I forget the the name of the governor. But um. But. This is also interesting because because it's a step in that direction, and it does prevent a certain number of abortions. It does put limits. Pro-abortion groups are going to want to fight it. The problem is, how do you take a racist stand or a sexist stand and say no? We think it's okay for people to go around and you know killing babies because of their race. You know, I mean, but. How do you do that and not come off looking like the clan? Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, it's this is a step in an interesting direction that I don't know how they're gonna, you know, how do you, how are you gonna fight that? And uh, so I, I thought it was brilliant because it was just it's there's there've been different times where states have said okay we're gonna limit abortion to this or that and it's always been so broad like well it was basically they outlawed abortion and the problem is it goes to the courts and, and it gets shot down immediately. I mean, it was a waste of time to do it. And But this, this is something different. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how, that plays you know, out, how yeah. this plays out. So I'm not sure how we got from that sound. <laughs> um, oh, why did he keep her as a wife? It's yeah. About wives and Conception and marriage. Well, I mean, she couldn't have been that bad. He slept with her for a whole week. And they had kids together. Yeah. Well, then, uh, Several. Yeah. So maybe, you know, at night, you know, he can't tell if one is wandering <laughs> one way or not, you know? It's all dark in the tent, so. This guy has no redeeming qualities. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He did his brother and his dad. Honestly. <laughs> mm -hmm. He pulled one on the old man. Yeah, you know. Oh, boy. Mama's boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, you know, and that's the thing. When this happens, you don't even feel bad for him. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you're right. Not you know. at all? <laughs> It's like, yeah, hey, you're what getting you your just desserts, about? buddy. You, you, got, you got two women out of the deal. If, if one of them says no to you, you just go to the other one. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and, man. And, and the thing is, because they're competing for your affections, neither one of them is going to say no. I mean, isn't this amazing? No matter how Sorry, right. much he messes up, yeah. he always comes out on top. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just goes to show God does have a sense of humor. He <laughs> has to. He absolutely well, has to. More than that, this shows God's grace. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, maybe I, even to Leah, though, you know what I mean? I mean, especially. I mean, you're right. Maybe if she just maybe wouldn't have never got a chance to marry a guy. I mean, you never know. Well, and, and not only that, just jumping down since you're on the topic, from whom does Jesus descend? Right. From Leah. From Leah. Right. Not Rachel. So, you know, so there the it's she ends up with sort of the ultimate honor there, um, and so in, in that sense she really gets the last laugh on all of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, all of her children tend to be the the sort of dominant tribes and, and things like that. So, <clears throat> it you know God doesn't just just like with with Hagar. That God says, oh, you know, your child's going to be a great nation and all this kind of stuff. And he took care of her, even though she wasn't the, you know, the covenant one. Um, in this case, even though Leah was the sort of... Second um, choice. Second choice. She still God honored her with mm -hmm. a tremendous honor. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, even with Esau, too, you know, I mean, when he didn't get the birthright, I mean, the Edomites, just a huge nation, you know, and always a big thorn in Israel's side for years and mm -hmm. years, so... Yeah. So, so yeah, but we see, you know, this is, I think this is one of the things that I love best about the stories in the Bible is, is that these horrible sinners and, and God takes these people, he uses them and, and he does great things through them. And, and you just go, wow, that really, you, you forgave that? You... You still loved it. You honored them. You, you know, but at the same time, this is something that a lot of people have a really hard time with about Christianity. I mean, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine who's an atheist, and and one of his big beefs is, 
oh, this whole um, what happened to Jesus, that's not fair. That's not just. Well, it's, it's grace. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's definitely grace. Okay, but that's not just. It's not right that the 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 just should die for the unjust. And I said, but he willingly went. I don't care. <laughs> but, yeah, but that made it. I mean, he, he was willing to do that. It would have been different if he was going against his will, right? You know, and, and I use the example of, uh, okay, you've got a, a guy that's, um, you know, he's uh, he, he gets himself into a drunken stupor and, and he's smoking and he starts his house on fire. He, um, a, a fireman goes in and saves him, but ends up, the fireman ends up dying of smoke inhalation or something in the process. You know, they're the just died for the unjust. Right? We can specifically die because of the sins of the unjust. He says, yeah, but that's different than someone taking your place. Going in deliberately taking your place. But, but not really. The fireman I, willingly went in there knowing that there's a chance he might not come out of right. it. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, what it comes down to is that, um, you know, what happened to Jesus, yeah, it really was horrible. No question about that. Um, and I don't totally understand. I can't completely wrap my head around the justice angle. The grace I've got figured out. But here's the thing. With God, grace always trumps justice. Always. Right. And, um, and you know, there's, there's times where God makes a promise and he breaks the promise. It's always when God promises destruction and then he relents and he shows grace instead. Never the other way around. Right. He never promises grace and says, "No, nope, I changed my mind. You're toast." Right. So, um, so, so that's just nature of God is that when it comes down to choosing between grace and justice, He chooses grace, right? And that's to our advantage. And and while that that does not sit well with with our sense of of justice, our sense of justice is also based on our own experience. And you know, and, and whatever you've read from philosophers or, or whatever, um, but but God exists, you know, beyond the universe and, and eternally, and, and and so you know, there's uh, we're not necessarily gonna understand all the ins and outs of what real justice is, you know. But God, being God, He has the right to define it. So, so it's you know, and I just like to sort of sit back and go. Well, I'll just enjoy the grace. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, he actually put on his on on, on Facebook on his little uh, this little info section where you put little quotes that are that that are meaningful to you. He put, God justifies the unjust. Pastor Dale, <laughs> because for him he's like, look, this is saying God gives people a get out of jail free card, and 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 that's not right. So he put it on there sort of sarcastically, you know, that and with sort of the idea that um, that look, this is saying that you can do whatever you want, and it doesn't matter. Well, except if you look at the history of Christianity, while there's a few things that we're sort of embarrassed about, like the Crusades and stuff like that, overall. You know, you look at look at the hospitals in this country. Why are so many of them named after saints or, or something like that? Because it was the Christians that started it. You know, when when Haiti gets nailed, when uh, you know the when the the southern United States got nailed, when um, you know various places in the world get hit by earthquakes and tsunamis and all that kind of stuff. Who are the first people there to help out? The Christians. Mm -hmm. All right, and they're there. You know they're they're over in Indonesia helping the Muslims, you know, and because they don't care, they're they, I mean, they don't care who you are. All they know is that you're somebody that Jesus died for, and so we're going to help you. And and so um, so you can say, well, it's a cop out, and you can get away with whatever you want. Yeah, but that's not really not how it works out. No. You know, overall, maybe for some people take it that way, but then they don't really understand the depth of God's grace. Right? Because if you really understand who this God is, you're not going to want to cop out. You know? <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, th I think Jacob kept Leah as a wife because he was bound mm -hmm. um, to her. 
But uh, and we already, we already talked about how does that how do you think Leah might have felt here? You know, there's sort of pros and cons here, but I'm I'm sure that there was, you know, we we definitely see there was some jealousy going on <laughs> that, that between them. You know, I I, I can't imagine a, a marriage like that where. <laughs> It would have been awful, even for Jacob, even though he deserved it. But um, <coughs> I'm thinking there was plenty of days that he couldn't wait to get out there to those yeah. blocks and yeah. just get the heck out of that tent. You know what I, I mean? Know. It's like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it was probably to his advantage to have them, um, you know, fighting against each other, though, because then they couldn't gang up against him. <laughs> it would have been a smart move. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 It, you know, I, I saw this once that in most cultures um, that have polygamy, the word for second wife is is also is like roughly translated enemy or <laughs> or, or um, rival or, or something like that. It's it's like it's understood in these cultures that okay. I've, you ought to do that, fine, but just be aware of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, I just I keep thinking of that. I think of anybody like that. You know what I mean? You could have one wife and one of you going, Jacob, you're always out in the field all day. How come you're not fixing the tent? It's got a hole in the roof and it's raining on top of my side of the tent in there. And the other one's going, yeah, and you know what? You haven't cleaned up all the other crap around the yard. And it's, oh, man, it's like, i got to go to work. I'm out of here. <laughs> like anybody that wants that kind of punishment, oh, one is Funny enough. man, that would be a dream come true. <laughs> what about these ones that have harems? Oh, my goodness. Oh, see, you know, the, the, I, I've got that figured out, though. Yeah. That's why they they had a harem tent. Okay. You keep them all in there. Okay. And you call them to you one at a time. Ah. <laughs> Baboosh. Come over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then it's like, okay, I'm done with you. Yeah. Go. <laughs> oh. Seriously, they don't respect them, you know? No. I, mean, I think it's because we're brought up different. That's just been that thing too, you know. It's even in the whole dating thing. I, I never got where guy. I don't know we're deviating, but it's just when I hear of other guys that were like they're dating two or three girls or girls that see two or three guys. I'm like, how do you guys do that? I mean, if I've got my affections, it's on one person, and that's the one person I want to be with, just her. You know, I can't, I can't give her my time and my my devotions and stuff and then well okay that's it for tonight i know i'm gonna go see betty lou tomorrow i, it, I can't see how anybody can channel that kind of yeah. energy well, and emotion you know so i just could never do that you know jesus said no servant can serve two masters and, and in a marriage you know the same thing um the, the exception to that i can see is with kids i was I, when when my wife was pregnant with our second child I was worried because I loved the first one so much and I thought how could I ever love somebody else the way I love the first one and I was afraid that I was going to have favorites or something like that un- unwillingly um, and I worried about that and then she was born and boy, oh okay now I get how you can love them both the same <laughs> they're just so different yet, you know right yeah just so like oh yeah no okay it's, it's totally different <laughs> All right, so does God condone polygamy? This is important to understand. He allows it. Doesn't mean he has to condone it, right? But it's never his plan. You know, he made one man, one woman. And, uh, and so he does allow it, but... It's always there's sort of always this movement away from it, and it never works out well. I mean, you look at at Sarah and Hagar, and the you know he had to send one away. It got that bad, All right? You see here with Leah and Rachel, they're constantly at each other's throats. It, it's a just a huge problem. Um, you look at the ultimate example is Solomon. Mm-hmm. All right, what happened? His wives led him away from God. Here's the guy who, who loved God so much that, that he just said, God said, pick a wish. And he said, wisdom. I want wisdom to, to, to lead your people. It wasn't riches. It wasn't power. It wasn't... It was, uh, just give me wisdom. Here's a guy that, that wrote a honeymoon poem 
the Song of Solomon. It's a honeymoon poem that t- takes his marriage and and his relationship with God and parallels them. If somebody really understood, he really got it, and it's beautiful. And then he started marrying more wives. He's like, what are you thinking? And his oh, their political alliances or you know or whatever. But yeah, they're wives. Yeah. And and now some of them he probably never saw after the wedding. They went back to their country. He stayed in his. I mean, they had real political kind of marriages, but a lot of them he had around. And they had a huge impact on it. I think that's why he did get kind of messed up toward the end of his life, you know. Yeah. And just had that thing about everything just vanity because, yeah, suddenly he just... I mean, you know, you talk about people in your ears. You know, if you... All these, these pagan wives that are constantly saying, Whoa, what about, um, you know, what about these gods? And what about these gods? And, and, and what makes you think your god is so great? Look at our god. And, you know, and... And all stuff, and how can you be so exclusive? And how can you, you know? And, and you can right, sometimes right. easily forget where you came from, right? But oh, it's like El, well, isn't that El, Elkanah and Hannah? You get El, Elkanah, just that one kind of testament. He had Hannah and his wife, and another one, and and Hannah was barren, and that's when she went to the temple and prayed, and Eli was the priest, and she prayed to the Lord, and but, but I mean, those two in that story, same thing. This guy has two wives, and they're they're constantly at each other, you know rivaling it's like I don't know, this guy's just a glutton for punishment or something okay and so this is I always look for Jesus in the story and, and this one um, was kind of interesting when it jumped out at me but how do you see the love of Jesus in the actions of Jacob anything in which he had a sacrifice <laughs> between the two of them Okay. And he had a sacrifice to have two of them, I guess. I mean, you look at just the extra work that he did. He went the extra mile so that um, so that Rachel could be his. Yeah, he worked the extra seven years. Um, that he didn't have to. He could have said, you know, forget it. I'll just sort of make sure that we keep things dark and I'll be fine. You know? <laughs> but no, he was, all right, fine. Whatever it takes, I want her with me. Yeah, and that's what guy. Jesus did. Mm-hmm. Whatever it takes. Alright, any, any questions, comments? Mm-hmm. He still thought enough about Rachel that even after she had died after giving birth to their last, their second and last son, that, I mean, he erected a monument, suppose. I don't know if they say it's, is it supposedly in the Bible, it says it's still there to this day. I don't know if Rachel's tomb still is, or. I don't know. If it says that. it's still there to this day, that's when that was written. Right, not right. necessarily to this thing. Right, but obviously he stood a long, long time. So, mm-hmm. but uh, so he obviously did love her that much, you know. I mean, it doesn't say anywhere where he, you know, made a monument for Leah, but so he's pretty good at the monument thing, though, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> With all his travels, he's making a monument here, a monument there. I think people traveled and went. Jacob was here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell by his monument. <laughs> his style of monument. <laughs> All right, let's close the prayer. Oh, Father, we thank you for your forgiveness, for your presence, for for your love when we do all sorts of of nasty things that that we don't consider them as as nasty as what uh, the things that that Jacob did. And, yeah, you loved him, you love us, and, and we know that no matter what we do, you said if we break one commandment, that we break them all. And we've certainly done that, and so we pray that you turn our hearts ever toward you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.